In this review we look at a long-awaited model from Diecast Masters. It is the Caterpillar 352 Ultra High Demolition Hydraulic Excavator. As usual for a Diecast Masters Highline Series model it comes in an outer shipping carton and inside that a nylon bag covers a high quality tin. It shows a picture of the machine on the front and there's a photo of it working on the lid. Turning it around we see that there are more pictures, including showing the model both in demolition mode and in excavator mode. There are also technical details of the real machine. Just like a biscuit tin we pull the lid off, and the first thing we find inside is a Diecast Masters mini brochure for 2021, and some instruction leaflets. Next we can look down inside the tin and see what we've got, and we can start to get the model out. First out is the demolition boom, and next out is a small pair of plastic tweezers. That's followed by a bag of parts, and then we have a second demolition tool. We need to dig deep to get the rest of the model out, and the first part that follows is a stand for the booms. Then we have the excavator boom, and that's followed by the machine itself. This has some additional packaging on it, and that includes elastic bands to help keep the doors shut, and also protective plastic on the crawler tracks. There are two leaflets included with the model which describe various aspects, and the first is the removable bucket on the excavator arm. And inside there are a few diagrams which warn about the stability of the model, and we'll investigate that later. There's also advice about installing the operator. The second leaflet starts by explaining how to fit the excavator boom, and then inside it discusses the boom stand and the fitment of the demolition tools. It finishes up with the fitting of the demolition boom. We will start by putting the demolition boom on the boom support stand, and we'll disconnect the tool by undoing four screws. On the stand there's a small beam which gets pinned into place, and this is slightly fiddly for anyone with salami sized fingers. Next we offer up the boom onto the support stand, and there are lugs at the end of the boom which drop down into the support structure. Then it's pin time again, and the beam is secured with steel pins. That deals with the demolition boom, but what we'll do in this part of the assembly is to attach the excavator boom. It drops in at the top, and you use screws to secure it in one of two different positions. You then secure the hydraulics of the boom with a simple press-in connection. With that done, we then have the 352 rigged as an excavator, the demolition boom on its stand, and there are two work tools. The other thing we can do is to fit the operator, and although the instructions say he should go in through the door, we will take the parachute approach and drop him in through the roof. Starting underneath the 352, the tracks are metal and they're narrow as is usual on a demolition excavator. There's some detailing on the undercarriage, and there's also casting details in the underside of the body. The counterweight is not removable. The detailing of the tracks is good, as is the detailing of the track frames. Moving up to the cab, and the protection grills are made of plastic, and the door mirror is also of soft plastic. But in general, the detailing around the cab is very good, and that includes some small graphics. With the cab door open we can see some of the interior detail, and that includes various controls and a blank console. Detailing along the body side includes panel handles, and the fine mesh grille pattern is formed of graphics. 
The door hinges do stand out a little bit because of their silver colour. At the back, the cat logo on the counterweight looks smart, but the lifting eyes on top don't have holes. On the opposite side of the body, the same standard of details are provided, and the handrails are metal and thin. Other smaller details include textured steps. One thing the model is not short of is hydraulic hoses, and the yellow pipes are also modelled in soft plastic. Looking firstly at the excavator boom and it's well detailed, and all of the hydraulics give it a busy appearance. Moving down the stick towards the bucket and there is a quick connector. The metal bucket is a nice piece with wear plate detailing and nice teeth. And the underside of the bucket has got nice ridging. Moving on to the demolition boom and it is a metal part of a similar standard. Again there is plenty of hydraulics detailing to make it look interesting. And the hydraulic ram at the end of the stick has some debris protection. While we're here let's look at the stand and it's an interesting mix of metal handrails with the main platform support structure actually being in plastic. There are two tools which are metal parts. The one on the left is described as an MP332 concrete cutter jaw and both tools have cat branding. The one on the right is an MP324 demolition jaw. <laughs> The first thing we can use this model for is as heavy haulage loads. Although the counterweight is not removable, we will still load the 352 onto our big low loader. And we can also use other parts as heavy haulage loads. Now I'm not sure if we'd load a US truck like this, but maybe a US viewer can let us know in the comments below. Overall, the model makes a good convoy. Starting underneath the 352 and the tracks roll very easily. And a good feature is that the track frames are extendable from a transport mode to a working mode. The track tension is created with spring loaded idlers, but there are no working rollers. With the machine on a rough surface, the tracks roll well. Here in excavator mode, let's expand the tracks out. And then we can rotate the machine. And after initial stickiness, it's nice and smooth. Let's now test the movement of the excavator boom. And the range of movement seems very good. The boom goes up to a near vertical position. And the movement of both the stick and the bucket are also very good. If you'd like to see the machine fold up really small, well, we can do that. And when I say really small, I only mean that because it's 1 to 50 scale. The excavator boom has two optional fixing positions. So you can have a cranked boom if you want. And of course, it's always nice to display a model like this with others. We always like to dig deep on cranes, etc. And the 352 doesn't disappoint. For deep digging, it is very good. The other bit of functionality on the excavator boom is that the bucket is removable and it simply unclips. And if you're in demolition mode, you can put the excavator boom on the stand. Now we will move on to the big leagues and look at the demolition boom. It fixes on in the same way as the excavator boom with a couple of screws and it raises to a vertical position. The tools are attached by offering them up and screwing in four screws. And there are a couple of hydraulic connections to make, although they easily pop out. The instruction sheet warns about stability of the model. So let's give it a test by lowering the folded boom. The hydraulic rams do a reasonable job of holding their pose. And as we lower the boom, the stability is actually pretty good. In fact, you can almost get to a horizontal position. And with the boom parallel to the tracks, the machine is not yet overturning. So in terms of the model's stability, that is very good. The instructions tell you not to have the boom over the side of the tracks. But again, doing this test with the model, and really the stability is still pretty good. So in that respect, you can have some realistic poses. Of course, for actual demolition work, the main boom would be largely in a vertical pose. And the stick would be more horizontal so that debris didn't fall down close to the machine. The model is nicely stable in this pose. 
And for both of the tools, you can open and close the jaws. And you can also fully rotate them. Because the boom is heavy, one thing to be aware of is that it may bleed down over time. So Diecast Masters have included clips which you can attach to the pistons of the boom rams. They clip on to effectively lock the extension. And they're nicely designed because you can rotate them so that the silver piston can still be seen. And this is a good way to secure the model in the display case. There's still a lot more functionality and that includes a fully tilting cab and it holds any pose that you set. Another really interesting aspect of this model is the number of opening panel doors and that includes a small one to the cab tilting mechanism. These give you a different way of looking at the model and there is yet another panel door on the opposite side and also an opening flap up on top. And by looking inside, you can see a cat logo on the engine. So this is quite a big model, so let's do a dim check. And the maximum height is about 22 inches or 55 centimeters. Or if you're so laid back that you're horizontal, then it's about 14 inches or 36 centimeters. <laughs> It has been a long wait for a big Caterpillar demolition model. And it's been worth the wait because Diecast Masters have done a very good job with it. In addition to the excellent presentation and high detail, there's plenty of functionality. It is not a cheap model, but overall it is excellent. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.